Welcome back, everybody. My next guest tonight is a professor at Vanderbilt University and a New York Times bestselling author of over 20 books. His newest is Long Time Coming. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Michael Eric Dyson. Professor Dyson, good to see you again. My friend, always great to see you. Now, uh, you've authored 20 books, as I said. We've been talking for almost 15 years now, since our first yeah. time I ever interviewed to you. Um, this new book, Long Time Coming, uses a slightly different form than you've used in the past. This, this is written in the form of letters to black victims of police brutality and, and racism in the United States. Why'd you want to write these letters to these people rather than about them? Yes, sir, it's a great distinction. I didn't want to further objectify them. I didn't want to exploit their death as a way to sell books. I wanted to commune with them. Uh, it's not in a loosey-goosey abstract sense. I mean, learn from their wisdom, draw from their recently uh, ancestral status. And I wanted to say, by talking to them, by communing with them, I'm thinking out loud. It's forcing me to talk about how they died. What are the reasons for which they were killed? How do we stop the train of incessant killing of black people, especially at the hands of cops, but also by vigilantes? And what can we do to derive wisdom from their journey so that we can prevent others from uh, suffering a similar fate? Um, the book's in some ways a, a response to the protests this summer over police brutality. Um, they were massive, some of the largest protests in history, not only in the United States, but around the world. Uh, right. Of course, one of the... Um, one of the questions that arises after a social moment like that is, how is that sustained? And how is that turned into something lasting? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's what all social organizers try to figure out. How do you take a moment and make it a movement? You know, Martin Luther King Jr. surfaced, uh, became famous, and then was killed, what, 12 years later. Uh, it's not long, the trajectory of transformation that you have at your disposal. So what you want to do is to leverage the moment in a way by thinking, how can we replicate what we saw in the streets in the corporate suites? How can we make it work in schools? How can we make it work in our uh, jobs that we enjoy every day, the opportunity to talk to one another? So you wanna translate the tremendous power that we saw in those streets and make no mistake, not only was one of the largest in history around the globe, but white brothers and sisters who saw George Floyd die because they were at home, because the pandemic said, we all got to be on our screens, and so we're looking. And so it came across as a very powerful moment. And then white brothers and sisters, among others, saw that the COVID you know, pandemic had already assaulted black bodies, so they were more empathetic. So as a result of that, George Floyd got to them in a way that, say, Eric Garner had not, uh, in a way that other black deaths of Walter Scott and Mike Brown had not. So take this moment of reckoning and then use it as an opportunity to reflect more critically upon our lives and figure out how we can extend it beyond the Yahoo and the celebration and the right on to something deep and sustained. One of the rallying cries, um, I want to I get to an, uh, another one. I want to get to I Can't Breathe in just a moment. But one of them was right. um, defund the police, calls to defund the police. Right. Barack Obama said this week that defund the police, he called it, let me get this right, a snappy slogan that lost a big audience. Do you agree with him that that, while the intention may be right, calling for defunding the police can turn off a wide swath of the populace? Well, there's no question about that. Uh, and then I know people who are upset with him, but if you read his entire interview, the way the question was set up, he's trying to answer it based upon the presumption that using that phrase would already lose people. But remember this, Martin Luther King Jr. said, hey, the, uh, the moderate white ministers in Birmingham wrote me an open letter and they accused me of being an extremist. And he said, first it got to me, but then I thought, wait a minute, Jesus was an extremist for love. Uh, Amos was an extremist for justice, Martin Luther for reformation. So I got used to that term and then embraced it. Um, the question is, what are we talking about here? If Barack Obama rightly says, hey, do you want the commercial of the product? Do you want to sell it and celebrate it and say, hey, we're all doing it? Or do you want to quietly move up to the bar and say, look, this is the stuff we need to happen? That I can agree with. But here's the problem. 
if you're using your particular moment, Mr. Uh, Obama, and you've got one of the biggest platforms in the world, uh, besides Stephen Colbert, you've got the next biggest one, you figure out <laughs> how to say, look, but I stand with those who want to reform the police. In fact, I stand with those who want to abolish some of the horrible practices here. Abolition was not a big thing that white people liked in the mid-1800s in this country. But guess what? It was the right thing to do. So yeah, I believe in being self-critical and being introspective. Use words that won't turn people off, but at the same time, don't use your platform to make the vulnerable more vulnerable. If in your moderation, you are strong against the weak, but you are weak against the strong, your moderation is worse than expedient. It's cowardly at that point. And we don't want to use uh, a platform to reinforce the power of those who already are mighty and undercut those who have a real issue here. The police have harmed and hurt people for so long that maybe reformation is not enough. And let me say this too. Defund simply means this. You want to put money in the accounts of those who are mental health experts so that when the police are called, you can send them out. So, yeah, find a different word, find a different phrase. But I think Obama could stand behind those who want to find new ways to encounter old problems. We have to take a quick break. Uh, but when we come back, I'll ask Professor Dyson what gives him hope. Stick around. Uh -huh.